I think it's impossible for us today to imagine what a revelation the first photographs would have been to people. These mirrors with a memory to record things that looked just like what we saw. People's ideas of time changed completely. For the first time, you would know what your grandparents looked like even if they died before you were born. To see this process make its place in the lives of ordinary people is to me the most exciting thing about it. It changed everything. In 1814, 1815, you have a man named Nesephore Nieps. And what he discovered was that asphalt was sensitive to light. He painted the solution on a piece of glass and put an engraving on a piece of paper on top of that. And where the light shined through and exposed that asphalt, it hardened. If you put that piece of glass with the asphalt into a solvent, it will remove the areas that weren't hardened. The earliest photograph we know is on a piece of pewter made by Nesiphor Nieps. It's a view from a window. It's from the 1820s. And this image made by asphalt still exists. So that's, that's the invention of photography. Nieps knows that he's onto something. And he takes Louis Daguerre on as a partner. Daguerre was well known in Paris in the 1820s, you know, well before the 1839 announcement of the daguerreotype. He was a showman. He ran this 75-foot diorama. Daguerre himself wants to make images. He understands how a camera obscura works. Nieps didn't have the money. He didn't have the youth. He didn't have the health. He really kick-started Daguerre. When Nieps died, uh, Daguerre continued his experiments on his own. By 1839, Daguerre has a, a system that is fully realized. It's perfect. It's a piece of copper coated with silver, and you have to polish it very well to the point where you have a polish that when you turn the plate towards a darkened room, it looks black, and it's fumed with iodine, and when you take it out of the box, it's yellow. That's silver iodide. The plate is then put into a camera obscura, or we would say camera now, but a camera obscura. Given enough time, it's exposed. When you take it out of the camera in, in a darkened room, there's nothing to see on the plate. Completely invisible, same yellow coating. But when you put it in another box with a little container of mercury and heat the mercury, the fumes of the mercury dance upon the plate. And when you withdraw that from the box, you have an image. You still have to fix the image. And fixing is a strange term. It basically means that you're preventing the plate from changing any more as light strikes the plate. And you place it into a solution that fixes it. It's something that we now all call hypo. The garotype is placed into a special case. It's designed to keep air away from the plate because air is what makes silver tarnish. Daguerre would give the process to the government. The government then would allow anyone in the world to do the daguerreotype, except England. And so if you wanted to make daguerreotypes in England, you had to pay a fee. This is the Giroud daguerreotype camera. It would be the world's first commercially manufactured in sole cameras. It's the camera, but it's also the system that goes with it that, that you need to process, sensitize and process the image. It's essentially an American phenomenon. It was the Americans that embraced it, that used it. It was Americans that were leaving home and striking out further and further west so that people could have something to uh, think about and to reflect on and to remember people by. Tell that improves the photogenic drawing process by switching from silver chloride to silver iodide, the same silver halide that Daguerre uses in his process. The latent image calotype process that he invents in 1840 allows him to make a little bit of an exposure. And then he develops out the invisible image to a visible image using gallic acid. And so now he can put this into a camera and actually do pictures of living human beings. He can then make photographic negatives, and after those negatives are fixed with hypo, he can then place those on top of a second sheet of sensitive paper 
exposed that to light, and now he makes a positive proof. So he has negative and positive. He essentially introduces the negative positive potential for photography that becomes the standard of photography until the, uh, the invention of digital photography. The rivalry between Daguerre and Talbot continues today.